Eventually what this is leading up to is me taking this and putting it on an expandable poly object. So I can lower it all the way down to 0 or uh, 1 to 10. Not everybody can have a 16 million poly object being floated around in some scene. Maybe if you're using this as a design for a wall for a game or you know maybe an amulet on a guy, you certainly couldn't have a 16 million. So I'll show you how to transfer this back onto an expandable mesh that goes from 1 to 10. And then you can we can make normal maps and use our new feature located somewhere. Oh, that's right. This is 3.1. Well, I got 3.2 somewhere floating on my hard drive here. Uh, I didn't load it up. Hmm, weird. So we're going to transfer it using GoZ. Okay, so now let's take this. What do we do now? We delete lower, right? We take this and make it into an alpha. We take that alpha and we mask by it. We hide. What's going to be really interesting, there's a really fine line going all the way around each, each one of these. Okay, so now what? We uh, delete hidden. We go into the subtool panel and we extract. Cross your fingers. Oh, that's just so sweet. Let's play around with it some because it's got that nice little tiny area all the way around it. See these little tiny things? So let's see if we can't use that to our advantage. Let's see what happens with the deformation palette. Use your mouse. Don't use your Wacon tablet. Trust me. Let's maybe go inflate only in Z. Let's inflate by 40 and see what happens. Okay. It's interesting, but it's still showing this. I want it to actually affect the extract, not this. So let's go back into this. This is what I want to use the deformation for. So I'm going to try to inflate it in Z first, see what happens. So that made it a lot thicker. Let's see what uh, smooth does, because what I want to do is kind of round it off some. So smooth. And I'll do that by 40 pixels. Nice. I'm seeing elements that need to come in forward. Some need to come back. So what I can do here is go like this. I want these elements just to little bit ahead. I tip it on its side, go to the move, and move it ever so slightly up. Now the only bad thing about this is I am at the discretion of my own steady hand. So what I could do instead is actually go in here and offset it in Z. And the only wrong thing about doing this part is I don't know exactly what, how much offset and which, if it's negative or positive. And if I go to accidentally use this in the wrong way, it's always going to fail. So I'm going to get the rough estimate by moving it. And I'm going to say, well, if I offset it by a negative 2, it should be okay. 
Who? Look at that. So obviously we would add a lot more to these. But, you know, I don't want to keep going on and on and adding parts. I, I think I've shown you enough to make you a believer in the good workflow here. I'm going to set that pivot and maybe carve on this a little bit. I don't want to gaudy this piece up too much. I'll probably take the standard brush with a drag rectangle and go in here and make some kind of just a bump or two every once in a while. Because if you see, I have my radial symmetry on and it looks like it's offsetting it okay, but look over here. See, it it's not quite lining up. So rather than try to get it using radial symmetry because it's not radial perfect, I'm going to leave it alone. I like the design, I'm not going to screw with it. So how would I transfer this over to, you know, a different kind of polygon? So that's going to be next. 